There's a new IT certification on the horizon, and you can be one of the very first people to earn it. CompTIA's Data Plus certification comes out in early 2022, and it's focused on a topic that's crucial to modern businesses, data-driven decision-making. Hi, I'm Mike Chappell. I'm an IT certification expert, and I've been active in the field of analytics for many years. I'm really excited about this new certification and how it might transform the data analytics career field. Let's talk about the certification and what you can expect if you try your hand at the Data Plus exam. The Data Plus test covers questions from five different domains of knowledge. You'll need to understand material about data concepts and environments, which makes up 15% of the exam questions, data mining, which is a quarter of the questions on the test, data analysis, which includes 23% of the questions, visualization, which also weighs in at 23%, and data governance, quality, and controls, which is the remaining 14% of the exam content. Now here's the deal. Each one of these domains could cover an incredible amount of material. In fact, I've taught graduate level courses on some of these topics. However, this Data Plus exam is an entry level test. It's designed for the newcomer to analytics. So let's talk about what you actually need to know in each one of these domains. I'll walk you through each one of the five. But before I do that, I want to take a moment to encourage you to visit my website at certmike.com. On that site, I offer a free study group for the Data Plus exam. As a member of that free group, I'll send you weekly emails that guide you through the exam preparation process. You'll learn how to get ready for test day using a combination of video courses and my Data Plus study guide from Cybex. Okay, let's take a look at the five domains of the Data Plus exam in more detail. The first domain is called Data Concepts and Environments, and it has three specific objective statements. The first objective is that you must be able to identify the basic concepts of data schemas and dimensions. This is where you'll need to know some of the ways that organizations store data using relational and non-relational databases and data warehouses. You'll also need to know about the ways that you can structure that data differently, such as through the use of the star and snowflake schema types. In the second objective for domain one, you're expected to be able to compare and contrast different data types. You'll need to understand when to use different numeric and text data types, as well as some special data types like dates, currency values, images, audio, and video. This objective also expects you to understand the differences between discrete and continuous data types. The final objective in domain one asks you to compare and contrast common data structures and file formats. You'll need to know the difference between structured and unstructured data, and you'll also need to understand the different file formats used to store data, including text files, JSON, XML, and HTML. Once you've mastered the material in Domain 1, you can move on to Domain 2, Data Mining. This domain includes four objective statements. The first objective in Domain 2 is that you'll be able to explain data acquisition concepts. This is where the Data Plus exam explores data integration techniques, such as the ETL and ELT processes, the use of APIs, and data collection mechanisms. Moving on to the second objective, you'll be asked to identify common reasons for cleaning and profiling data sets. A huge portion of the work done by data analysts revolves around cleaning data, and it's included on the exam for good reason. You'll need to know about issues that often arise in data sets, including duplicate and redundant data, missing values, invalid data, and data outliers. The third objective asks you to actually execute data manipulation techniques. Now, this is a good point to pause for a moment and talk about the wording of these objectives. I want to highlight the fact that this objective uses the verb execute. That means that you actually have to know how to do these things. The other objectives that we've seen so far have used softer words like explain, identify, and compare. When you see objectives like that, you know that you just need to understand what something is. When you see a word like execute appear in the exam objectives, that's a red flag that you're actually going to have to do something on the exam. For this objective, you'll be asked to recode data, create derived variables, perform data merging, blending, and concatenation. 
You'll also need to know how to aggregate, transpose, and normalize data, and parse and manipulate strings. Now, the Data Plus exam won't ask you to write code in SQL, Python, or R. So if you're going to see questions on these topics, I'd expect them to be more hands-on in terms of presenting you with some data and asking you what operation you need to perform on it or what the result of performing an operation on the data would be. They'll be hands-on, but you won't actually have to write code. Now there's one last objective in Domain 2. It asks you to explain common techniques for data manipulation and query optimization. Here you're going to be asked to explain data manipulation techniques like filtering, sorting, and applying common functions. You'll also need to explain query optimization techniques like parameterization, indexing, the use of temporary tables and record subsets, and the use of query execution plans. That's it for the data mining domain. From there, you'll move on to the third domain of the exam, data analysis. This is where we start getting into some of the more complex material on the exam, like statistical analysis. Here, you're going to want to pay particular attention to the words in the objective statements, because they're going to tell you when you just need to understand a concept and when you need to be ready to do some math. The first of four objectives in this domain is that you need to be able to apply appropriate descriptive statistical methods. Now notice, this objective says apply, so that means that you need to be ready to do the math yourself here. You need to be able to look at a data set and calculate measures like mean, median, mode, range, variance, and standard deviation. You'll also need to perform calculations with frequencies, percentages, and confidence intervals. This is the main applied math objective on the exam, and I know it can be intimidating, but don't worry. When we get to this material in my video course and book, I'll walk you through the calculations step by step. We'll get through all that math together. The next objective is about inferential statistical methods. And now we have a different verb. We're back to explain. This means that you need to understand these techniques, but you won't actually have to do the math yourself. Here you'll need to be able to explain some statistical tests like t-tests and chi-squared tests. You'll also need to understand z-scores, p-values, and hypothesis testing, as well as the use of simple linear regression and correlation. Again, I'll walk you through each of these in detail in the video course and book. The third objective takes us away from the world of statistics and asks us to summarize different analysis techniques. You'll need to know how data analysts figure out what type of analysis to perform from reviewing business questions through determining data needs and scoping the analysis. You'll also need to understand the data analytics menu and be able to explain trend analysis, performance analysis, exploratory data analysis, and link analysis. The final objective is another one that can be intimidating if you don't pay careful attention to the wording. The objective gives you this huge list of data analytics tools. Now, if you tried to learn how to use each one of these tools, it would take you months of study because this is an enormous list of tools. But look at the wording of the objective. Identify common analytics tools. You don't need to know how to use all of these tools. You just need to know what they are. I'll walk you through this so you're ready with a level of knowledge that you need when you take the Data Plus test. And that's it for Domain 3, Data Analysis. Next, we move on to the fourth domain, visualization. Now, we know that it's often easier to tell a data story with visualizations than words, and that's why there's an entire domain of knowledge covering this material. You'll face five objectives in this domain. The first objective asks you to translate business requirements into reports. You'll need to know how to determine the appropriate content to include in a report and how to use filtering and views to limit the scope of the report. In the second objective, you're asked to use appropriate design components for reports and dashboards. You're going to be asked to explain the purpose of a cover page and work with different design and documentation elements like color schemes, layouts, fonts, and data sources. The third objective asks you to use appropriate methods for dashboard development. Here, you'll be asked questions that focus on finding appropriate data sources, understanding your consumers, developing dashboards using mockups and wireframes, and the different approaches for delivering your dashboard to your audience. The fourth objective asks you to apply appropriate visualization types. 
You'll need to know how to create and interpret line charts, pie charts, bubble charts, scatter plots, bar charts, histograms, and other visualization types. I'll show you examples of each type of visualization that you'll need to understand in both the video course and my book. And finally, the fifth objective asks you to compare and contrast different types of reports. You'll need to know about static and dynamic reports, ad hoc and self-service reports, recurring reports, compliance reports, risk and regulatory reports, operational reports, and tactical or research reports. Once you've finished that material, you can move on to the last domain, data governance, quality, and controls. This is the shortest of the five domains, and it only has three objectives. The first objective asks you to summarize important data governance concepts. You'll be asked about access and security requirements, storage requirements, and usage requirements. You'll also be asked to explain entity relationship diagrams, the use of data classification, different jurisdictional requirements, and your obligation to report data breaches. In the second objective for Domain 5, you'll be asked to apply data quality control concepts. These include understanding how to check data quality, both manually and using automation. You'll be expected to know the five dimensions of data quality, consistency, accuracy, completeness, integrity, and attribute limitations. You'll need to understand data quality metrics and the methods used to validate data quality. And finally, the last objective of the exam asks you to explain master data management or MDM concepts. You'll need to be able to explain the standardization of data field names, the use of data dictionaries, and the consolidation of multiple similar data fields. You'll need to know how to apply MDM in different circumstances like mergers and acquisitions, for regulatory compliance, and to streamline data access. And there you have it. Those are all of the objectives covered on the first version of the Data Plus exam. I hope that you'll join me in becoming one of the very first Data Plus professionals. Remember to visit my website at certmike.com to join my free study group and we can prepare together. Thanks for watching, and please click the like button below if you found this video useful to help other people discover it.